main theme of FF7. I don't know why it fits so well here, but you know, it feels very grandiose as we go into this matchup, which is gonna be between Foxa and Mezcal. And Mezcal actually gonna be having to play against Foxa's secondary in the pack, which is a character they do bring out pretty frequently. Uh, I think about two thirds of the amount of play time they have on the Joker as well. So this will be interesting. I feel like a character like Pac-Man has the buttons to get a lot of combos on big characters like this. I don't know how the momentum is going to shape at the beginning of this match. The fact that, you know, Mezcal knew the exact perfect angle that Down Tilt was going to send that at. That was beautiful stuff. Whoa, 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 yeah, I mean, between these two characters, there is a lot a lot to be desired when it comes to high-flying offense. You know, Pac-Man, people are like, oh, he's a zoner, he has these projectiles, he's very lame. Not so! He's got some of the best buttons in the whole game. He forces you into tech situations, and man, man oh man, if he has an apple in hand whenever he starts forward airing you, you better grip and rip because you're going for a ride. Pack God, baby, especially with how big of a character this he is, and especially with how big of a hitbox that back air is for Scott Cole and a Mezcal. Yeah, those combos are going to be that much easier against a character like Ridley as well, which I think is part of another reason why they went Pac-Man. Beautiful up smash coverage out of that combo on the platform right there. That's another... Did we talk about that before the set started? Did we talk about the up smash? Yeah, I, I did. did. You did? I did. I gave oh. it lip service, yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't listen to you. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Wow, <laughs> man. man. <laughs> <laughs> your job is to talk. Your, your job is not to switch chats and listen. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, look. You know, it was in the Yeah, we're starting to see. We're starting to see a lot of you know, a lot of big whiffs here for Foxa, which is allowing Mezcal to get a lot of damage on the board. Uh, already having them at kill percent on this stock. The back throw still not going to kill. And that, that weight of Ridley, while it is not quite as heavy as most of the other heavies in this game, is still quite important. Yeah, that whiff F tilt as well. Going to be resulting in a roll behind. Not getting caught by the grab, but going in for the dash attack for the stock. Yeah, three to one stock situation here for Mezcal. And he's going to catch the orange too. With the F tilt, my friend, of course, you can catch projectiles with oh the attacks in this game. God. Beautiful down tilt to the forward air, keeping the pressure on, utilizing the side B specifically to get himself off stage in position enough where they could <laughs> land the forward air. Going a little too ham, though, I will say. Facing the wrong direction for the up B, let alone they couldn't even get it out anyway. My God, Mezgol putting a clinic out on Fox's Pac-Man right now. He is definitely representing the cunning god of death incredibly well right now. And man, he almost had the edge guard. I think he wasn't, uh, didn't have a good decision in the back of his head as to whether to uh, contest the trampoline or to contest pack. So he just tried to have his cake and eat it too, which is why he was able to lose that first stock. But that back air, so long, so fast, so powerful, he's gonna be taking yet another stock this match. He's gonna be pushing Mezcal into a game two situation with the lead. Now, I would also like to mention real quick, if the Northern Cave pick of uh, match one surprises most of you guys who are very used to it being a counterpick stage, the stage list here in France is very, very interesting. You have nine legal stages, two of which are gentleman stages that one of each player can de decide on. So there's five gentleman stages you can pick. Northern Cave is one of them. Cal's is another one. Both Yoshi stages, including Yoshi's Island Brawl, is a gentleman stage. And then the last one is gonna be Hollow Bastion. So all nine stages are legal as starter picks, which is why we were able to see that. And now we are gonna be seeing the Joker come out from Foxa. Yeah, Pac-Man just not doing too good right there. Getting caught in some weird offstage situations for sure. And Mezcal, like really thinking outside of the box, literally utilizing, I have never seen a Ridley player utilize Space Pirate Rush like that. Purely for positioning, usually for yeah. tech chasing or on stage or something like that. No, it doesn't put me in a free fall. So I'm just gonna go off stage and like just catch you off guard where you know you think I can't hit you. Right, and yeah, at the very wow. least, it's a good conditioning tool too. Whenever you see those purple project or those purple particles, you're like, oh, okay, Space Pirate Rush is coming, but then he might go for the uh, the upbeat, and then you don't know what the heck to think. 
Oh, catching with the low lag up tilt as well, completely covering that platform on top of that, you know, trying to uh, keep Joker in disadvantage, take advantage of that. The ledge trapping and the kill power is going to be a lot different in this set, though, especially with that boy coming out. Arsene Ridley off the top here. No, no, Yeeha not going to do it right there. Yeah, really good. Really good air dodge, well timed and everything. Survive that, but I think the uh, Jarsen already is starting to prove to be a little bit too much for Mezcal to deal with. Yeah, the Pac Man, you know, has very, very unsafe options. They have a couple really safe ones like the Ford Airs, but all of your kill options, your grab, very, very unsafe as a whole, and they resulted in quite a lot of whiff punishing that from Mezcal, which is why they're able to have such a definitive lead in the last match. But now you have Joker, who is one of the most agile characters in the game, really safe options, fish joints, everything you could possibly want in a character, Joker has. And right now, Mezcal is struggling in a big way to deal with it. Yeah, you know, force him down into position. Utilize the up B right there um, from the opposite side. Definitely looking a lot different from that last game for sure, but a pretty solid lead on the part of Foxy so far. Nothing that can't obviously be reversed so far. We see Mezcal sort of relying on those fireballs, plasma breath. A lot different, uh, a lot more, I should say, this time around. Not something we saw them do that much against the Pac-Man, in which they were much more aggressive. Now sort of being forced to respect Fox a little bit more and just getting juggled around like it's Metroid Pinball Laird. My goodness. <laughs> this is looking like a completely different uh, game than that first uh, the first one. Yeah, deep cut for my co-caster right now, but man, the deep cut on Mezcal right now. 161% on the second stock. This is a complete reversal of game one, where we're seeing Mezcal on their second stock at a high percent. Fox is just now losing their first stock, though. And here's another thing I, I think it's worth mentioning, my friend. There is a, uh, a big disparity with, with how Ridley covers the landing options of a lot of characters, right? But the thing about Joker is he has that the down gun, obviously, which has been a really good, safe option for Foxy to get down a lot of the time. And there's that rising Tetracon to get back on stage. It is going to be pushing Mezcal into the border. Now they are at 201% yet again, just trying to bait out that Arsene. Yeah, you know, not having the easiest time dealing with Arsene dying through the down throw at 210%. Wow. I mean, you just expect the back throw. I was gonna say, you just expect the back throw in a situation like, like, like that, wouldn't you, Vince? Uh, you would, but like, you know, I think Foxa just recognized the percent was right there, and instead of just going for stage positioning or whatever, decided to just go for what they knew what was gonna kill or thought, hey, they're in such high percent regardless that they're gonna be putting an insanely disadvantageous position regardless, even off of this throw. So there's no reason to sort of like waste or stale the back throw right there. And that's what I gotta say. He has been feeding the meter so much into that down beat. Not that it's an easy thing to work around. That move is insane and obviously charges Arsene, but like, we've seen Arsene out a lot more in this game than I feel like the character necessarily should be, and that's because Mezcal is kind of still just swinging for the fences like they were in that first game and just beating that Joker over and over again. Yeah, he does play like a heavy Ridley does. Mezcal's playing that very well too. Here's the thing though. Joker has a very fast counter, and, and one that, even if he doesn't have the counter active, he has a, a way to get it active real quick and not take a lot of damage as a whole. He's been using it uh, as a jumping uh, protection option off stage to give him a lot of space. But right now, we're starting to see the advantage they come out in a big way. 53% uncontested right now for Mezcal, who does have a lot of rage. A little bit more percent, and we could be seeing that early stock get taken here. Oh my god! Oh! oh. <laughs> Platform coverage was so insane right there before that setup and then going for another space pirate rush off the level, but now Arsene is out, and now they not only have to avoid the giant strong and beefy hitboxes, they have to Ooh, make it yeah. back in the first place, narrowly missing the ledge with that the wing crazy. blitz right there in the upbeat. Good on Fox. I had to clutch that out a little more than we thought that they were gonna have to, but still able to take that game with the Joker fairly solidly. Yeah, I think I would have liked to see a space pirate rush there to make it back first because it doesn't send you into special fall so you can maybe drift in and then go for a an up B. but then again i don't know because you only have eight specific or actually six specific angles you can use that move with so i don't know it, it, it maybe it would have been a little bit closer but we're going to be seeing the run back to northern cave this time it will probably be the joker getting locked in for boxa so very very interesting we're running it back here but very different circumstances now this is game three here Mezcal very comfortable on the stage, obviously. I mean, we went there game one. Now we're going here game two. So, you know, let's let's see where this goes. Or excuse me, game three. Yeah. And 
mystery out here, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We just got that up smash coverage on the platform. Now we got a character with some pretty great mobility and insane kill power to boot when that Arsene boy comes out for sure. It's gonna be a I'm very anxious to see how this is gonna go. Because I feel like Mezcal can do some better work on the stage, a little more room to work with, as well as the platform just being in better positioning. I don't know if you saw, but at the end of that second game, Mezcal started to mount a little bit of a comeback, had a pretty yes. good 60 damage string, but then when they went for the back air, the platform actually stopped them. They landed right on the very edge of the left small battlefield platform, and that's what wound up getting them launched off stage in the first place for the edge guard that wound up taking oh, the game. Oh, he's dead. Boxer! No, he's no, not! Back up! Arsene! That's not the perfect he time! He just saved him. Unfortunate there for Mezcal, who very, very nearly had something. A tremendous reversal there from Fox. Come back on top of that. That's oh. insane, though. Up tilt, up there. Uh, Arsene is almost gone. He's got a little bit of meter left. And Mezcal is playing very evasive in Fox's face, getting a lot of shit damage on the board. Uh, but man, here's another thing you gotta keep in mind, though. This D like center of this stage. Very scary because down gun is borderline uncontestable. You don't have any platforms to hide under. So an option that was already very, very difficult for Mezcal to deal with when they had platforms to retreat under is now even more so difficult. The whole scenario was so unfortunate. You know, they say like the, uh, the you know, they say the, um, the, um, the rope up beat a lot better for Joker than when they have the Arsene out, but the intangibility seemed to come out at the perfect time for them that time around. But, you know, eh, it doesn't matter now. We're way past that scenario as we got the neutral reset once again on the part of Foxer. He's doing a really good job just keeping that pressure on in the corner, really showing you that the Joker is their main right here with the expertise with the rising neutral air right there. Yeah, Foxer putting on a clinic reversal this time around on Mezco. Yeah, you do that to me game one, I will do it to you for the next two games, buddy. That's what Fox is trying to say right now. Already at 24% of their last stock, still unable to take the stock away from Foxa. For a character like Ridley to not be killing this early, or this late rather, it's a big deal. And he keeps just swinging for the fences, giving so much Arsene. This is now the third Arsene we've gotten on the first stock. Yeah, not doing a good job running, working around that counter either. The huge beefy hitbox of that one for sure. Finally able to kill it 200% on Joker with the neutral air on the other side. You know, Mezcal's definitely got to clean up their uh, their kills right here as well as just like learning when and when not to swing around that counter. But that's a free 30% on the part of Foxer right there as well as it allows them to reset the neutral once again, which just lets the percentage tack slowly but surely with the EHA on to Mezcal over and over again. It's the little things like this that it's going to make this game in the favor of Boxer if he doesn't change up how he's playing. Right, best call is in comeback mode though. We are starting to see him mount a little bit of a string where he has advantage, but right now he has Arsene. And man, two quick backers just like that. One landing, one rising. So fast, so deadly. Near pop that shield as they up there. It is gonna kill right off the top. Not even too high in the air. And unfortunate way to go for Mezcal getting too stocked on game three. But man, man, you had to deserve that after what you did game one. Boxer. Pulling out the main for the counter pick. Such a good job in this match, using all of Joker's options to get around it. Look at that. He recognized that every single time Mezcal gets off stage and that's or gets off ledge in that situation, he, he he likes to fall off stage and then rise with an aerial or a uh, space pirate rush. That's why the back air was able to connect. He fell off the ledge. Yeah, not even just that, but the coverage on top of that as well. You know, recognizing of course.